Welcome to Gate Academy. So now we will continue our previous discussion which was for the state of stresses like two dimensional state of stresses and three dimensional state of stresses and in this lecture we will discuss about the Mohr circle for three dimensional state of stress. Now we know that in any condition of state of stresses how can we draw the Mohr circle okay. So starting from the two dimensional state of stress if this is the two dimensional state of stress like this is sigma x okay, this is sigma y, this is sigma y okay and this is the shear stress tau xy, this is tau yx. So we know the fundamental things, okay. So the tensile stress will be positive, tensile stress will be positive, compressive stress will be negative, okay. Also the clockwise rotate, if the shear stresses are such that they are causing an, uh, an anti-clockwise rotation of the element then they are taken as negative and if they are causing a clockwise rotation of the element then they are taken as positive. So this is shear stress that is tau xy is causing a clockwise rotation of the element hence clockwise rotation, clockwise rotation of tau okay will be positive okay and anti-clockwise rotation of the tau will be taken as negative. Okay. You can also remember the thing as if uh, in the left, in, if in the right phase the shear stress is acting in downward direction, okay, it will be positive. Okay. If in the right direction it is acting in downward direction, so this will be positive and if this is acting in, uh, in upward direction, so then this will be negative. Okay. Now the sign consideration for the location of oblique plane that is theta, if theta is making a clockwise angle okay, with respect to the reference plane then theta is taken as positive. If theta is being measured in an anti-clockwise manner with respect to the reference plane then it is taken as negative. Okay. So here what will be the reference plane? The, the plane which carries the higher value of normal stress. Let us say let us say that sigma x and sigma y are the two normal stresses. Now if sigma x is higher than sigma y then we can take the plane that is the x plane as a reference plane okay because the x plane is carrying the higher value of normal stress as compared to the y plane so i will be i will be referring the sigma the plane x okay so plane x plane x or you can say x plane x plane will be will be the reference plane okay and if sigma y is greater than sigma x you can take y plane as a reference, y plane as a reference, okay. So take y plane as a reference in this case. Now with respect to the uh, reference plane we will be measuring the, si we, we will be measuring the angles, okay and the sense of the angle that means the direction in which the angle is being measured. So here as I have assumed this, so with respect to the x plane theta is making an anti-clockwise rotation sorry a clockwise rotation is there so theta will be positive okay and if it is like this then theta will be causing an anti clockwise rotation with respect to the reference plane so here if theta is this so this is negative and as this is causing a clockwise sense so this will be positive okay so theta being measured in clockwise direction will be taken as positive and theta measuring uh, being measured in anti clockwise direction will be taken as negative so theta anti clockwise with respect to a reference with respect to reference is negative okay theta clockwise with respect to reference with respect to reference is positive so this is a simple sign convention and the same sign convention will be followed in the analytical approach okay so if you will be using the formula which were discussed in the previous lecture so in that case also we will be following the same sign conventions okay. So the, there will be no difference in the outcome of a Mohr circle and the analytical approach okay. Now to draw Mohr circle we will be using the simple coordinate geometry okay. Simple co coordinate geometry will be used. So the concept is that we will be taking sigma n in this direction and this sigma uh, and tau in this direction. So this is positive sigma n, this is the negative sigma n 
okay this is positive tau this is negative tau so this is tau, sigma n versus tau axis okay now now the straight the stress of stress will be defined okay by using the normal stress and the shear stress okay so here in this particular plane if you locate a point like this so it, this point will be having a certain value of sigma n and, and a certain value of tau okay so this represent this point represents a plane which has a normal stress let us say sigma n1 and a shear stress that is tau1 okay so any point in this particular plane will be representing a state of stress of a particular plane this is a fundamental concept okay now in the given figure we have two planes this is a vertical plane this is a this is a horizontal plane let us say this is plane a this is plane b okay so for plane a we'll be writing the coordinates of plane a and plane b so that we can represent those plane in sigma n versus tau axis okay so plane a plane a have a coordinate sigma x and tau xy is causing a clockwise rotation so this will be plus tau xy okay and for plane b we have coordinates sigma y because it is tensile it, if it is compressive i will be putting minus sigma y okay sigma y and tau y x and remember that tau x y is equal to the tau y x okay such that their magnitudes are same but directions is opposite direction are opposite now we will be representing the points okay the points on and here here tau y x is causing an anti clockwise rotation right so the, here we will be using minus tau y x or you can also write it as minus tau x y okay because the magnitudes are same but the directions are different okay so we will be able to make a mohr circle like this okay so first of all we will represent okay i have drawn mohr circle previously what will be the procedure first of all we will be locating point a that is plane a in the plane sigma n versus tau plane okay then we will be locating plane b okay we will be plotting uh, locating plane b now we will join plane a and plane b like this okay now this now this will be intersecting the sigma n axis at let us say at a point c now taking ac as a radius we will draw a mohr circle okay so this will be this will be sigma y this will be tau y x you can say okay this will be tau x y this will be tau tau x y okay this will be this value will be sigma x okay now the location of the center this location will be sigma x plus sigma y by 2 okay this will be sigma x plus sigma y by 2 this is the radius sorry this distance this is sigma x this is sigma y so this distance will be sigma x minus sigma y by 2 okay now if if this is the situation then this plane will be the difference plane okay so every plane will be located with respect to the difference plane now if i talk about the location of principal plane that that if uh, the, the principal plane will always be uh, represented or being located by plane a okay so the angular position of the principal plane will be with respect to plane a because plane a is our reference plane okay so here here we have a plane this point which is representing a plane as i have told you that in this diagram every point will be representing a plane so this point is having zero shear stress as you can see that this point is lying in sigma n axis and for any point in sigma n axis the coordinates will be sigma n and zero that means this point represents a plane in which there is no shear stress and such a plane is known as principal plane and the normal stress acting on the principal plane is known as the principal stress so this is the principal stress this is the this is the principal plane and here we will be having a value of principal stress for given state of stress okay and here also here also the sigma n is present but tau is zero so this is also the second principal plane this point is representing the second principal plane and there we have another value of sigma n okay now now as you can see that this is the highest that highest point and the lowest point of the mohr circle okay so this will be this will be the tau max xy 
tau max x y that is in plane tau max in plane tau max okay this will be the maximum shear stress in the given plane as you can see this is in x y plane this is in x y plane so this is the maximum shear stress in the x y plane okay and the value will be equal to radius of mohar circle radius of mohar circle mohar circle okay so this is the this is the procedure to draw the mohar circle now we can look as this is the principal plane and this is our reference plane okay let us say this is this is d this is e this is f this is g now plane f f and g are principal plane are principal planes okay so the location of principal plane will be with respect to the reference plane so this angle will be the location of principal plane now let me tell you a small difference between the location of principal plane in the mohar circle and the value of the location that is location of principal plane through analytical method here you can see that the those planes that is plane a and plane b which were given in our state of stress are making 180 degree with each other the angle between plane a and plane b in mohar circle is 180 but in actual practice this is making 90 degree with respect to each other okay they are at 90 degree hence we can say that in mohar circle the actual angles will not be there the angle between two planes in a mohar circle will be twice that of the actual angle between those planes so if here the ab is making the angle between a and b angle between a and b is 90 degree but in mohar circle the angle between a and b is 180 degree that means the angle represented on the mohar circle is twice that of the actual value okay angle note it down angle on mohar circle is twice that of twice that of actual value of angle okay so let us say if the angle is theta in an in the given state of stress then in mohar circle it will be 2 theta so if theta p is the location of principal plane for the given state of stress if theta p is the location of principal plane then in mohar circle it will be 2 theta p so this will be 2 theta p okay now as i have told you here we have the top most and the bottom most point of the mohar circle and corresponding to this we will be having the maximum shear stress that is in plane tau max so this plane that is this is h this is i are carrying the maximum shear stress so we can also locate the location of plane carrying maximum shear stress and the location will be measured with respect to the reference plane so this angle this angle that is the angle between the reference plane and the plane carrying maximum shear stress okay can be noted as this is this is 2 phi 1 this is 2 phi 2 phi 2 okay now this is also a principal plane this is also a principal principal plane so we will be having two principal planes one will be carrying the one will be carrying the maximum principal stress and another will be carrying the minimum principal stress in the given state of stress so this will be theta p 1 this will be theta p and this will be theta p 2 okay this let me make the an angle like this is theta p this is theta p 2 2 theta p 2. Okay, so if you want to know the analytical formula of the plane location of location of plane with tau max, so this will be phi equal to half 10 inverse minus sigma x minus sigma y upon 2 tau x y. This is the location of the plane with maximum shear stress. Okay, so this is the approach to draw the mohar circle okay now if there is three dimensional state of stress if there is three dimensional state of stress so for that particular state of stress we'll be having three principal stresses okay this is let us say this is sigma 1 this is sigma 2 and this is sigma 3 okay sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 now the thing is the thing is the 
the point at which the Mohr circle is intersecting sigma and axis will be giving you the value of will be giving the value of the principal stress. Okay, so we will be having two values of principal stress. Now here we can draw three Mohr circles as we have three planes x y plane, y z plane and z x plane then we will be drawing principal uh, sorry uh, Mohr circle for these three planes. Okay, so we will be getting three separate Mohr circles. Okay, so let us say this is the first Mohr circle, let us say this is the first Mohr circle. Okay, now if, if we consider that case, okay, so here the stress acting on the z direction is 0, so this is basically a case of plane stress, okay, this, this is the case of plane stress. So here, here in case of plane stress, remember in case of plane stress, plane stress sigma 3 will be 0 because because sigma z and tau xz tau zx sorry tau zx or you can also write tau xz or tau zy are equal to 0 okay so if you draw the three dimensional state of stress like this i am just representing the stress on z plane so the stress on z plane is 0 sigma z is 0 okay being a plane stress condition sigma z will be 0 also also this z plane this z plane carries no shear stress okay if this is x direction this is y direction so this will be tau tau z y this will be tau z x okay so both are zero as there is no stress on the third plane that is z plane neither normal stress nor the shear stress hence as this plane carries no shear stress, so the z plane becomes a principal plane, right? Because it satisfied the definition that the principal plane carries no shear stress. So as there is no shear stress, then the z plane becomes principal plane, principal plane, okay? So you can say that for plane stress condition, for plane stress condition, you can say that the z plane, the z plane becomes a principal plane because the stresses that is shear stresses on z plane will be 0. Okay. So, directly the value of third principal stress will be 0 in case of plane stress. Okay. So, sigma 3 will be equal to 0. Now, if you have if you have three stresses, okay, if you have three stresses that is sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3. Now, on solving any given state of stress let us see that so this state of stress is given this is stress of stress is given and let us say sigma y is negative or the values of the various stresses given in this stress of stress is such that you are on using the formula of principal stresses which you were which were discussed earlier that is sigma 1 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus minus root over sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y square. If you will, if you use this formula for a given condition, let us say that sigma 1 and sigma 2 is coming out to be, sigma 1 is coming out to be let us say positive and sigma 2 is coming out to be, sigma 2 is coming out to be negative. Okay. This is a separate discussion. Okay. Just focus on it. This is very important discussion. Now, now sigma 1 and sigma 2 is coming out to be positive and negative and as this is case of plane stress, hence sigma 3 will be 0. Okay. Now, in order to find the absolute tau max, we must understand some fundamental thing. Okay. So, to decide which will be the tau max, how you can get the tau max using an analytical approach or a graphical approach like Mohr circle, you must understand few things. Okay. If you are using an, an algebraic approach then as sigma 1 is positive sigma 2 is negative and sigma 3 is 0 according to you right now i am not using proper notations okay i'll be i'll be modifying the values later okay now on solving these values uh, this equation i am getting sigma 1 positive and uh, sigma 2 as negative clear now as this is a plane stress condition sigma 3 was 0 initially it was 0 now algebraically algebraically positive value will be the greatest value then 
the intermediate value will be the zero and the lowest value will be the negative value okay as if you have two value one is zero and second is minus 12 then algebraically this is the lowest value as compared to this okay and if you have 12 0 and minus 12 then this is the greatest value and this is the lowest value so this will be sigma 1 this will be sigma 2 and this will be sigma 3 okay this will be so if sigma 1 is positive according to you let us say any positive value is there let us say this is 50 plus 50 this is let us say minus 20 and this is 0 so 50 that is plus 50 Newton per meter square this will be sigma 1 okay 0 this will be sigma 2 and the minimum value will be the negative value minimum value will be the negative value that is minus 20 okay so in order to find out the absolute term x we must go for algebraic approach okay i'll be telling you the use of this so this is algebraic algebraic approach okay so if you are talking about the greatest and the lowest principal stress according to our discussion then this will be known as the algebraically highest principal stress and this will be known as algebraically lowest principal stress so let me mention that sigma 1 will be the algebraically algebraically highest principal stress sigma 3 will be algebraically algebraically lowest principal stress and sigma 2 will sigma 2 will be the intermediate intermediate principal stress okay principal stress now uh, we can also take the major uh, uh, the maximum and minor uh, sorry the maximum and the minimum principal stress based on their magnitude also that approach will be clear while we will discussing the theory of failures okay right now there is no need to discuss any further okay this this discussion will be sufficient for solving this kind of problem okay to discuss this concept which i am going to deliver this much is sufficient okay and if you are going for the magnitude wise approach that means you will be considering the highest magnitude of the stress x as the maximum principal stress then what will be the consequences what will be the approach that will be discussed in the theory of failure properly okay now uh, if you have taken these values then then this will be sigma 1 this will be sigma 1 let us say this is sigma 1 okay this is sigma 1 and this will be sigma 3 this will be sigma 3 okay then you will be getting a very large Mohr circle and here we will be having an intermediate value that is sigma 2 okay so let me uh, compress the diagram so that we will be able to understand completely so you can see that this is the Mohr circle which can be drawn for the previous example which we have taken okay so here you can see that sigma 1 is positive value sigma 2 is the 0 value and this is a negative value okay now on observation you can clearly see that the greatest Mohr circle that is the largest Mohr circle was drawn between the maximum and the minimum principal stress okay so if if the values are taken algebraically if the values are taken algebraically then the Mohr circle drawn between the algebraically highest and the lowest value of principal stress will be having the largest radius and as I have told you that the radius of Mohr circle is equal to the shear stress okay so it was in plane is shear stress but this statement holds good for every Mohr circle so for any Mohr circle the radius of Mohr circle represents the the value of maximum shear stress now at a in for a particular plane there will be only one Mohr circle has there will be only one shear stress that is maximum shear stress okay so for this plane let us say this is x for x y plane so f for x y plane this is the this is the tau max 1 okay for let us say for y z plane this is tau max 2 and this is for for, uh, for the uh, plane z x for z x this is tau max 3 okay so you can clearly see that tau max 3 is greater than tau max 1 and it is greater than tau max 2 okay so this is the greatest value of in plane tau max so this is the absolute tau max this is the absolute tau max now the fundamental thing is the absolute tau max will be obtained by the radius of that Mohr circle which is drawn between the largest 
and the smallest principal stress. So, if Mohar circle, Mohar circle is drawn between algebraically largest and smallest, smallest principal stress, then its radius, its radius will be equal to, will be equal to tau max absolute, okay, that is absolute tau max, okay. Similarly, here also we have a plane stress problem, this is another plane stress problem, okay. Now here you can see that the stress sigma 1 and sigma 2 are positive, sigma 1 is also positive and sigma 2 is also positive and being a plane stress problem, we have a 0 principal stress. So, as these two values are positive, so the lowest value will be that is sigma 3 will be equal to 0. So, again this is a kind of like stress, this is a problem of like stresses, okay. That means the two principal stresses or the normal stresses will be same in nature, either they will be tensile or they will be compressive. So, if the normal stress have same nature, then it is a problem of like stresses. If the they are uh, they are not same in nature, then it will be a problem of unlike stresses. Now, if this is a problem of like stress, so Mohr circles will look like this. As sigma 1 and sigma 2 are positive, hence they are all the Mohr circles are drawn only in the right side of the origin, okay. If both will be compressive, that means if sigma 1 and sigma 2 will be compressive, the entire diagram will be drawn in left side, okay. Now, here also the same concept is being followed, if the same concept is being followed. Sigma 1 being the greatest value of principal stress and here sigma 3 being the greatest, uh, being the lowest value of principal stress. If I draw a Mohr circle between the greatest and the lowest value of principal stress, then I will be getting the largest Mohr circle and the radius of this Mohr circle will be tau max absolute, will be tau max absolute. So, in a plane stress problem, in a plane stress problem, if both these stresses are same in nature, just remember this is very important point, if both stresses given in the problem like see, this is sigma x, this is sigma y, okay, like this. Okay, both are same in nature. So, definitely, definitely there will be a situation where normal stresses will come, there may be a situation where sigma 1 and sigma 2 both will be positive. If sigma 1 and sigma 2 both comes out to be positive, that means it is they are like in nature. So, for, so for like, stress, like stress condition, what will happen? You will be getting the Mohr circle, entire Mohr circle in the right side of the origin. If the condition is such, let us say if, if the stresses are opposite in direction like this, this is the sigma x, this is sigma y, then sigma 1 and sigma 2 may come, may both come negative, okay, both may come negative, it is possible that both may come negative. So, I have added an if, this is a if condition. So, if sigma 1 and sigma 2 comes negative, then also it will be a case of like stress, okay. So, for like stresses, uh, if the stresses are negative, then the entire Mohr circle will be on left side of the origin. Now, in this case, if you will consider, if you will consider it as a plane stress condition and for designing of the component, we will always consider it as a plane stress problem, then sigma 1, which is having negative value from the calculation will not be the maximum principal stress, okay. As this is a negative value, so algebraically talking the maximum value will be 0, okay. Then we will be having a value, a value of sigma 1, sorry, a sigma 1, sorry, this will be sigma 1 and this will be equal to 0. Then we will be having the next value, this will be sigma 2 and the smallest that is the algebraical lowest value will be sigma 3. Okay, and hence we will be getting Mohr circle like this. This will be the Mohr circle for the like stresses where the stresses are in, uh, are compressive in nature. And if they are unlike in nature, so you can also remember the point which I am telling you that for unlike stresses, for unlike stresses, that means if you have a problem like this, it is not like you will always be able to see the direct solution in the diagram only. Okay, by just looking into the diagram, you will not be able to 
just the condition you cannot just the values of sigma minus sigma 2 and nature of the sigma minus sigma 2 just by looking into question you must solve the problem okay so for this situation if you solve the for equation that is sigma 1 2 is equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus minus root over sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus tau x y square now if you are getting sigma 1 as positive and sigma 2 negative okay so this will become unlike stress this will become unlike stress problem so in unlike stress problem what will happen in problem of unlike stress is you will be having a positive value of sigma 1 and a negative value of sigma 2 from this equation but here as per our nomenclature sigma 1 is for maximum principal stress and the minimum value is represented by sigma 3 now which is the minimum value as this problem is for plane stress for plane stress then there will be a zero stress on the z direction the normal stress acting on the z plane will be zero so we will be having a positive a negative and a zero condition so this problem will be followed this will be the solution okay so for unlike stresses unlike stresses you can say for unlike stresses unlike stresses in a plane problem okay in a plane stress condition in plane stress condition okay in plane stress condition this will be the Mohr circle now the fundamental uh, you, uh, thing is that if you are getting a positive and a negative value out of this relationship then the negative value is undoubtedly the lowest value of the principal stress okay so if using this formula i am writing it again okay if using this formula that is sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus minus root over sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square into tau x y if you are getting a negative value and a positive value and this problem belongs to a plane stress condition then this negative value of sigma okay this negative value of principal stress you can say is lowest that is minimum principal stress okay that is minimum principal stress okay so this was the concept of the Mohr circle and as uh, the fundamental idea is that if you are drawing the Mohr circle between the algebraically largest and the algebraically lowest value then definitely you will be getting the tau max as the radius of that Mohr circle okay and the and in that situation the radius of Mohr circle which is being drawn between the greatest and the lowest value the radius will be equal to the absolute tau max okay so this was the complete discussion about the Mohr circle for three dimensional state of stress and plane stress condition thank you very much